What is up everybody, Megabro here, bringing you a tutorial on setting up a dual PC streaming setup. Now this is going to be a pretty basic tutorial, uh, just to kind of get you familiar and get you up and running with the setup. Um, and we're going to break this down into a couple parts. One part is going to be what you're going to need, and the second part is going to be the actual setup. And my goal with this is just to make it really clear of how this is set up. Because when I was originally setting this up and trying to look at everything, I was finding a lot of confusing um, tutorials of finding a lot of conflicting information. Um, so I just want to kind of break it down how I have it, how I have it set up, and I want to make it so that it's very easy to understand and to get it set up if you want to do this. So now the question is, is why would you want to do this? Well, if you're like me and you have issues where you're trying to stream and play games at the same time, this is offloading all the heavy duty stuff onto a separate machine so that way you can leave your main PC running at smooth frame rates at higher resolutions. Um, now, the downside to this is you need two PCs. Um, one of them needs to have a fairly decent CPU. Um, I am getting away with a little bit of a lighter CPU, but we'll get to that. Um, so it is a little bit more of an expensive solution. Um, there is a lot more setup involved. Um, there can be some more troubleshooting issues that you run into. Um, but once you get it ironed out, man, it makes a ton of difference. Um, I went from being able to only capture 720p at 60 frames, um, most of the time only at 30 while I was streaming and recording to being able to capture everything at 1080 60 if I choose. Um, so it makes a big difference um, and my games don't lag anymore. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. It's pretty awesome. So let's get into the things that you're gonna need. <clears throat> so first what you're gonna need is you need two PCs. All right, now on your main computer where you're playing your games is you need to have a GPU that supports multiple monitor inputs. Um, whether this is HDMI, um, 2 DVI, uh, Display Port, etc. You need to be able to support at least two monitors. Okay. Uh, in my situation, I'm using three. I'm using two on my main machine, and then my third is for my capture machine. So we'll get into that. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind is if you do have a Display Port, you must be an active Display Port, or you'll need an adapter. And what you can do is if you're not sure if it's active or not. You'll want to check your GPU manual, just so it'll tell you for clarification what kind of active port you have on there. But I bought a cheap one off uh, Amazon for like 12 bucks, so they're not really that expensive at all. But you'll need to make sure it's an active display port, or this will not work. Okay. Uh, the other thing you need is you're going to need a capture card. Uh, currently, I'm using the Elgato Pro HD60. Um, I'm using the internal version. They do make an external version, but if you're going to get the external version, make sure you use. USB 3, okay? You do not want to be using USB 2. It's just not fast enough to keep up with the capture speeds. You're going to see a lot of screen tearing. Um, it's going to be really hard to manage, so I highly, highly recommend if you're going to get the external version is to make sure you have USB 3 in your computer uh, and that you're plugging into those USB 3 slots, okay? Uh, next thing you need is you're going to need some kind of audio mixer. Now, this doesn't have to be a physical thing. Um, uh, there is... Uh, mixer software out there and actually one that I use myself is called voice meter banana um, it works really good um, and I highly highly recommend you go with that solution um, I'll even be going how I have that set up in this video uh, the other thing is you're gonna need a microphone uh, and then you're gonna need capture software so the microphone I'm using is the um, blue Yeti microphone sounds pretty good so I'm recording this on and the uh, capture software I'm using is OBS pretty standard uh, pretty popular all right, so let's get into the specs here. So my main computer where I play all my games at is an i5-4670K. I have it overclocked to 4.2 uh, with a Radeon R9 280X. Now I can run pretty much every game at 1080p, high to ultra at 60 frames a second. Um, now the problem was is when I was streaming and recording, I wasn't able to get games to run that well, and I was having a lot of lag because I was really taxing my, my CPU. Uh, for my streaming PC, I'm using a Xeon X5472. I'm using two of those clocked at 3.0 with a NVIDIA GT620. Um, this 
the graphics card really doesn't make a difference in the streaming PC. Uh, it just needs to support, support OpenGL 3.0. Um, that's what's required by OBS in order for it to run. Um, so you just need one monitor import, and in, not import, but one monitor input on there. Um, that'll get that taken care of. Now, uh, it sounds pretty beefy using a Xeon processor, if you know much about processors. Um, it is an older processor, and I do need to use two of them to really make the solution work, but this is an older machine that um, I was given and I was able to restore just by putting in a new motherboard. Uh, you can actually find this computer, which is a Dell Precision T7400 on eBay for like $150. Um, and you might even be able to find it with a dual um, CPU solution for about that price. It's a, a Precision um, workstation desktop, a little bit older, but it does the job. It does what I need it to do. Now let's talk about what's plugged into what. Okay, so my main computer, what I have plugged in there is my microphone, my headphones or speakers, and audio mixer software, and your main monitor. All right, so that's what you're going to have plugged into the main computer. And then in your streaming PC, you have the capture card and the capture software being OBS in my case. All right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty here. We got the setup. All right, so we're going to start with your main PC, okay? So from your main PC GPU, whether it's your HDMI, DVI, or DisplayPort, is going to go to your main monitor, okay? So you want one input going to your main monitor. And then you want an HDMI. has to be HDMI because the Elgato cards are only going to accept HDMI. Uh, if all you have on your card is DisplayPort or DVI, there are adapters. So um, don't fret if that's all you got. There are adapters that'll go DVI to HDMI, DisplayPort to HDMI. Just remember, if you're using DisplayPort, it needs to be Active DisplayPort to HDMI. Okay, uh, and then you're gonna run that to your capture card in on the streaming PC. So, once again, we've got our DisplayPort, HDMI, or DVI cord going to our main monitor, and then we have an HDMI cord going to from our GPU to our streaming PC. Okay. Now remember, HDMI carries audio, carries audio and video, so that's all you're going to need for that solution there. Now, what you're going to do here is you're going to go ahead and right-click on your desktop of your main computer, and go to your display settings, you're going to click on Identify, and you'll see a number come up on each screen. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select the primary display, go to multiple displays, and select duplicate desktop on one and two. And what this is going to do, this is going to mirror the display to the capture card, okay? And we're going to, you're not going to really see too many results right now, okay? We're just getting this kind of set up, getting this kind of going. We'll get everything put into OBS where you can actually see your results here pretty soon. All right, so now we're going to move into what we need to do for the audio mixer program, okay? So for this, we're going to want to right-click on your speaker icon at the bottom right-hand corner. You're going to want to go to the Playback Devices, Playback tab, you want to set voice meter input as the default device. And then under your recording tab, you want to set your microphone to the default device. Okay, and that's all we need to do on the main computer as far as our inputs. Pretty simple. So let's move on to the voice meter here. Okay, so your most important outputs are going to be A1 and A2. All right, so how I have mine set up currently is A1 is my headphones for sound for myself, okay, so I can hear. Because right now I need to be able to hear audio as well as I need to be able to send it to my streaming PC so that way I can send it out to the internet, send it out to a recording. Uh, and then A2 are the sounds that I want to send to my capture card for my audience uh, slash my recordings, okay. So A1 is for my headphones for myself, A2 is what I'm sending to the capture card. Okay, so A1, you're going to select your speaker's headphones. A2, you're going to select your capture card. It'll typically be labeled in there depending on what kind of capture card you're using. Um, as you can see, mine is labeled as Elgato. Um, it may be labeled like Avermedia, uh, depending on what kind of capture card you're using. Okay, and then just for your hardware one, you're going to set your microphone, uh, just whatever microphone you're using, you're going to go ahead and set that. Uh, and then if you want to set a noise gate, you can go ahead and do so. Um, I use one of five. Um, and it works really well. Uh, I don't tend to have too many problems, but I have a couple adjustments on the microphone as well. You're gonna have to just kind of play with those settings to kind of get it how you want, um, as well as like the audio coming in and out. 
you want to go ahead and just kind of play with the mixing bars on there get it to where you want it to how it feels you're just gonna to want to do some test recordings um, make sure you like you like the way it sounds make sure your voice is coming through clearly uh, as well as maybe your audio isn't too loud okay you can adjust all those sliders now keep in mind this is really basic I'm not getting into any uh, in-depth stuff here but you can separate out like your other voice channels like discord or team speaker skype um, you can keep them on separate channels that way you can either send them to the capture or you can keep them um, from people even being able to hear them if you want to kind of keep people's conversations private all right now the last thing we need to do, to do is on our streaming pc uh, is make sure you have obs installed uh, when you have when you open obs you're going to go to your sources you're going to add a source a video capture device you're going to select your capture card and hit OK. Now, what you're going to do is you need to kind of play around with a couple of the settings here and there, um, how you want it to capture, uh, what kind of color scheme you want to use. Usually the defaults work pretty well for you, though. Um, and then what you're going to see is you're going to see your main PC displayed in your capture window in the middle. And you're going to see audio coming through under the mixture section from the video capture device. And that's it. You're done. Pretty easy setup once you know what you're doing. Uh, unfortunately, this took me hours upon hours of testing and reading different tutorials and trying to figure out. So I really want to give um, you guys a really quick breakdown of what I'm using, how I'm using it, and just try to make it simple for you. This doesn't need to be as complicated as it is. Um, so I hope it works out for you guys. Uh, if you got any questions, feel free to ask me. I'm happy to answer. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see, anything that's unclear, um, please let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to help. Hope you enjoyed this video, and hope to see you guys next time. And hope you enjoy your dual PC streaming setup. Have a great one.